yeah, uh, I think Saruta wouldn't want to fight me personally because I was, I was like, at, I was cutting down to 115 and he was at, you know, uh, his 130 self at the time. He wasn't cutting weight or anything like that. And I was still putting a beating on him at, you know, 22 years old. So uh, just imagine me now. I, I think that that would be a very tough fight for him. Hey, let's start off with this first, man. I remember the first time seeing you fight was for Pancrase. And I forgot who you beat. But then when you got on the mic, you just, like, shut everybody up in the arena, man. It was like, do you remember that? Do you remember getting on the oh, mic? Can oh, you take yeah, me back man. to that time? Yeah, that's uh, that, that was not one of my favorite moments. I kind of went a little too crazy there. But, um... But yeah, they wanted me to call out um, uh, Tsunabe, or it was it was another another guy. I forget his name. But no disrespect or anything, but um, but yeah, I just I went all out, and um, yeah, the the spunk from from the fight still got me uh, in that mode. But yeah, I was uh, a little too crazy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was one of those moments when I was just like, because, you know, in Japan, it's a little bit different from other places around the world. You know, the, the crowd is a little different. And also, there's a language barrier. So whatever you're saying, most of the people don't know what you're talking about, right? Dude, so, I know. <laughs> so, I, was, uh, yeah. I, I was not proud of that moment. Um, if anybody goes back and watches that on YouTube or anything like that, I uh, I really really did not it's, it's hard to yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> to, to, to put it into words um because i mean after that i fought in japan um mm. like two or three more times and you know i got i got the feel of mm. of how uh japanese fans really work and yeah that that wasn't me at all that was definitely another person <laughs> but you kind of started it though because now if you look at ryzen i remember i saw you fight live ryzen 20 the best ryzen show i think ever that, that they put on i was there for new year's eve and i saw you there after the show and everything um incredible performance too but now it's ryzen like the japanese fighters are talking trash have you noticed that hey man um you gotta sell fights you know throughout throughout this game it's kind of like it's like it's like the shifts kind of like the pulls shift a little bit, you know what I'm saying? I'm not trying to, to talk crap or anything like that. I'm just here to speak my truths. And, um, yeah, at the end of the day, people can, can call it talking trash all they want. But I'm, I'm glad that people are, are starting to realize that, that there's a business side into this game. And you got to draw viewers in because everybody has seen a fight, you know. So at the end of the day, you got to draw people in. And, and if it takes that to uh to really get on a fighter side or the other fighter side then yeah do it man I, I i'm really excited that the japanese fans are starting to do that yeah and and also even in one championship you know it started with uh i believe denise zambawanga and and angela lee before she was pregnant and they started going oh, back I didn't and even forth know about that. yeah they went back and forth and that kind of shifted everything for one championship too because before then not many fighters were talking you know trash or you know just like get going at other fighters but now you see it often fighters calling out other fighters and uh you yourself after your last fight i believe you called out minoa they gave you this fight man you guys were supposed to fight anyways you're ranked number three and he's ranked number four so how do you feel about fighting down in the rankings Mm, I, it was my first fight in one championship and um you know it's a title eliminator so i don't i don't mind man <laughs> at the end of the day he's he's a great opponent he has a lot in his uh tool belt so um i've been i've been working the in and outs of what he has and um and what i have uh i do think that at the end of the day i'm gonna get the dub and uh, gonna fight for that one championship. That's the main thing, you know. But uh, at the end of the day, um, in order for me to to get where I need to be, you gotta you gotta show out in the ring, and you gotta show out outside of the ring. So, yeah, whoever whoever they want to put me up against, I'll make sure it's a show. Is that, is that what one championship's been telling you? You know, because I know sometimes you know I talk to other fighters in one championship, 
Chatri or somebody comes up to them and tells them, gives them little hints like, if you go and win this one, we're gonna, you know, slide you in for that title shot. Yeah, um, it's not, it's not like a one. They're letting me kind of call the shots, and that's mm-hmm. super cool. <laughs> uh, you know, I think that they are. Uh, and and the thing I love about one championship is that they are doing everything in their power and they're not going to stop until they're bigger than the UFC. And that's, that's the main key. I think that that's like, I want to be a part of a promotion that is keeping on building and building and building and building and something I can build with them. So, I mean, yeah, it, it's super exciting. Somebody like Shatri too, he has that mentality to where we're going to get it done. He has tunnel vision. So, um, yeah, it, it's an honor to fight under him and one championship. Uh, Rich Franklin, everybody, uh, Matt Hume, everybody that has put me into the organization, and they really believe in me and believe in my skill set. And that's what I've been looking for the whole time, man. I've just been, you know, I've had to talk trash in different promotions and stuff like that to just get my name out. But now I actually have a platform to where I can, you know, spread that out and, and keep it real. You know, and, and that's that's the thing I've wanted to do the whole time. I just wanted to keep it real. And um, I do speak my truth at the end of the day, though. And whoever I'm fighting, they're going to have a lot of mental warfare. But it's hard. It's hard with Hiroba because Hiroba, he's a very quiet kid. So, um, and I say kid by all means respectful. But at the end of the day, he knows that, that I'm going to put a grown man ass kicking on him. Well, you know, when you check him out, and uh, he is a former Shudo champion, so very skilled. You, you have a lot of respect for him. You know, what do you see yeah. in his skill set, though? Super calm, super relaxed. Everything that he does, he's not a first round fighter. He's a third round fighter. So um, you gotta you gotta come correct at every. And he's very technical. Uh, people don't give him enough credit. What he's actually done in the amount of time that he has. He's been fighting since he was like eight in junior Shudo. So. Uh, I've definitely done my research on on Hiroba, and he has a lot of things that I have to worry about. But um, but he has a lot of things to worry about as well. Uh, <laughs> no disrespect or anything like that, but he's gonna he's gonna figure out real quick that I'm not in there to play any games. And I seen that Shatri just put out one hundred and fifty thousand dollars in the last uh, one championship. Uh, events so i'm i'm looking for that fifty thousand dollars and i'm looking for a title shot so yeah you're in my way Horoba. you're gonna get it definitely definitely they should have put the fifty thousand dollars at the last show right <laughs> like you know you would have got it <laughs> i'd be earl i mean i'd be like the main guy like, yeah. <laughs> the toughest guy in the division but hey no disrespect i'm still super happy to just be involved into the organization and just be where i was you know so um under the circumstances, I, you got to fight for it. So, and Shatri was there for this event, so he could actually, you know, see the event and and watch it, you know, play out. But yeah, I'm I'm looking forward to making some real money and making some real waves in the strawweight division. He, you just said he's a, a third round fighter, which means that he does not start so fast. And we've seen that in his first two fouts with one championship, eking out some split decisions right there, you know what I mean, against yeah. tough guys, but still eking them out. Do you feel like yeah. that's going to be his his poison against you, is starting so slow? Um, You know, it, it just ha- we have to see how the fight plays out, man. Uh, a fighter can be different depending on who he goes against, and he might shine against people that are really, really good. You know, so uh, I'm not I'm not saying that he's just going to look like crap in the first round and, you know, give me things. But if he does do that, then, yeah, he's going to be in some major, major trouble. And I've watched uh, almost every one of his fights and it is like that. So um, you better come correct that that first round because I'm going to come correct the third round as well. Minwa, he's only lost twice, both by decision. You know, what do you see in his fate against you when you face off against him? I just don't think he's gone against anybody that has, you know, the tools that I have and, and the things that I've, the mentality. I think that that's the, the main thing. He doesn't have, he hasn't fought anybody with the mentality like I have. And he hasn't fought anybody that is as strong as me. And he hasn't fought anybody that has, has shined in, in any organization that he's been in and 
yeah, he, he got Saruta that he's fought. He lost against Saruta, which was he was super young. But at the same time, he hasn't really changed his his fighting style. So um, I'm looking forward to just seeing how how it goes. I, I'm looking to get wowed. I want to be like, damn, I'm actually in a fight kind of mode. You know what I'm saying? Like with Davis and Figueredo, I feel like that was the only time that I really felt like I was, I was like, oh, shit. Like I've got to really, really push myself and and find the win but um unfortunately i don't think that Haroba is going to do that i think that i could I, my prediction personally is i'm going to finish him in the second round or uh earlier in the first but he's gonna he's gonna feel my power and he's gonna feel my strength and i think that that's what's gonna make him not want to be in the fight skills are skills man everybody's talented do you feel like in this straw weight division that those two things you just mentioned right there the strength and maybe the grip, you know what I mean, that you have on, on fighters, is that what separates you? Um, I just think I'm an all-around all great fighter. I think that I have all of the things that all these guys want. They, they want the wrestling. They want the kickboxing. They want the, the regular, you know, strictly jujitsu kind of stuff. Uh, I'm just a very well-rounded fighter. And I'm very smart and intellectual when it comes down to um, to the game. So yeah, I think I'm I'm waves above all of uh, the strawweight division. Yeah, you've been through every, almost every major promotion. So and so at such a young age too, because you're only 28 right now. Do you feel like this is the perfect time to just hop into one championship and and then ride this wave? And would you confidently say that you're like at the start of your prime right now? I, I feel like I'm I'm at the start of my prime. I, I, I think that I'm going to be fighting until I'm 40 years old. Um, so, at, you know, who knows? Uh, I, I, I felt really good and then felt really bad, felt really good, felt really bad. You know, you just got to keep on riding the wave, you know. But uh, with one championship, they have – it's all about opportunity. You know, when work meets opportunity, then great things happen. So that's, that's what I'm looking for. I'm just – I put in the work, and now I get the opportunities. So, all right. Well, now I just wanted to pick your brain about some of the other guys at the top of the strawweight division. Little Giant, he's ranked number one, two and zero in one championship. What are your thoughts on him sitting at that position? I think that it's. Um, I think that he's earned his his keep. Don't get me wrong. He hasn't faced anybody that's like extremely good. Like uh, who did he fight? Rene Catalan. And he fought, um, who, who's that Japanese fighter? Uh, I, for, I forget his name. But I, I, to be honest, for him to be ranked number one, he's super, super um, fascinating. He's fascinating to watch. But um, as far as, like, height-wise, as far as, like, the, the way that I see opponents, I don't see him as being, like, a huge threat. I think... Um, his wrestling is his his main thing, and I don't think he would do that against me. I think he can do it against these other guys, but not against old JB. I think that um, he's gonna gonna figure out real quick what what power and strength, and um, I think that that I can out wrestle Bokong Masanyane, um, and I can solidify positions. He doesn't solidify at all. He just uh, he just likes to get behind the back and and ride. He just likes to ride. So, um, and, he, and he barely punches. So I'm not really worried about Bokong. But you're looking forward to facing him, you know, with that strap, right? Yeah! <laughs> pop him right in the face, man. <laughs> All right. Uh, the number two guy, Yosuke Saruta, he's a former champ of the division. You know, do you ever see him fighting Pasio a fourth time? If they do, it would be dumb because we have a uh, – we have a stacked strawweight division and other guys to fight Pasia. So um, I don't really see Saruta. I mean, Saruta's really good. He, I've trained with Saruta. Saruta is, is very tough. Um, he's strong. He has a, a lot of great qualities about him. But he's a, he's a sloppy fighter. He's just sloppy. So, um, yeah, I don't, I don't really see a, a Joshua Pasia versus Saruta 4. I see a Saruta versus Brooks maybe, but... Besides that. When did you train with him? During the Pancreas days? The, yeah, it was uh, when I was cutting weight. I went to Hearts 
uh, MMA where he trains. And uh, I trained with a lot of guys that were, you know, shooto champions over there. They, and I wasn't even, I, I didn't even know these guys at the time. I'm just like, oh, yeah, these are your typical run of the mill guys. And then I started doing my research after, and I'm like, oh, shit, these guys are huge in Japan. So, uh, yeah, uh, I think Saruta wouldn't want to fight me personally because I was, I was like, a, I was cutting down to 115, and he was at, you know, a, his 130 self at the time. He wasn't cutting weight or anything like that. And I was still putting a beating on him at, you know, 22 years old. So uh, just imagine me now. I, I think that that would be a very tough fight for him. Were any of those fights ever discussed with you before you got hooked up with uh, Minowa, uh, Little Giant, or, or Yosuke? Nope. Uh, I just, I strictly have been calling the shots. Mm -hmm. You know, I guess daddy's home. I let daddy, <laughs> daddy call the shots. Let's get it. Yeah, it seems like the guys that are calling the shots, if you look even with uh, Quan Wanir, I believe he he maybe fought on the same night you did. I'm, I forgot. But he was calling the shots, too. He wasn't even ranked, and he beat Kevin Bellion just like yourself. You pe you beat a guy from Team Lakai, highly touted guy. Get on the mic. Call out the champ. Now they're trying to line up you with the champ and and him himself, too, man. They're trying to do it for him. So, so you said it earlier. There's a business side to it. You have to be outspoken. You can't just win fights. You have to try to demand some some things, right, as a fighter. 100%. I learned that a long time ago when I was in the UFC. Um, I was just, like, happy that I got the win. And I was just, you know, talking stuff that wasn't even, like, like nobody wanted to see. So, uh, if yeah, I got a second chance at this. And uh, I'm definitely calling my shots. And uh, a closed mouth, don't get fed, man. Anyways, man, you got... Your fight coming up January 28th, one championship, only the Brave, title eliminator. Okay. Jared, appreciate the time, man. Good luck on the fight. Thank you, John. It's always a pleasure talking to you, and I hope uh, you have an amazing night, and hope you enjoy the fight. And everybody else, hope you guys enjoy the fight.